Not often you get, get extras like that on a Morrisman minor. <laughs> Fetch your cloth. Straight in a bottle. That was really great, Granville. I'd never been kissed on the elbow before. You really wouldn't keep still, it were dark. I'm much better when I've woken up. Can you come back when I've woken up? I think you really need a steady girlfriend, Granville. Oh, no. I'm more like your footloose, love them and leave them type me. <laughs> On the other hand, if you know someone who you think could learn to like her elbows being kissed, I wish you'd give close that. An extra space like that could double the rates. <laughs> is that the uh, paper man in sight yet? No, that uh, paper man isn't in sight yet. What would a uh, paper man be doing out in the middle of the night? All right, they don't get your milk bottles in a twist. You'll be turning that sour, you know. Yeah, I think I already have. While everyone else is out enjoying their young manhood, I'm stuck here making emotional yogurt. <laughs> Well, if you're going to have a little tantrum, you can accompany yourself on the feather duster. Right. There you are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, you don't just stand there. Get, get flicking. Get flicking what? Get uh, flicking on with it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that I've never known that... These bottles are very warm, Granville. I've noticed this in you. You have a tendency to overheat your bare, bare bottles. <laughs> I shudder to think what that means in uh, Freudian terms. I think she likes me, the milk woman. Oh, really? What, just casual or enough to give us a discount? <laughs> You've got no soul. All you ever think about is money. Hey, you watch your mouth. I didn't bring you up to be uh, discourteous about the money. What about passion and adventure? No. Look at her. You've got to learn to pace yourself in life, Granville. You're no good to anyone overextended, are you? You've got to take things as they come. Your mother knew how. She used to take anything that come. <laughs> <laughs> One day all this will be yours, Granville. No, no, it won't. Not if you can find a way to take it with you. <laughs> we'll have to bury you in this lot in a great big container. You'll never be satisfied with a coffin. <laughs> you wouldn't let us fasten the lid down for a start. <laughs> you know, it'd be the first time you've ever been closed in daylight. <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, bearing up very well for an errand boy in pain. <laughs> I'm not in pain. Ah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you see how much sooner we of the older generation have noticed that sort of thing? Almost a telepathic we are. <laughs> Mind you, still in our prime, I might add. Still for fully functional. If only I could persuade a certain state-registered person, he said, time to start me motor. <laughs> Gee, fritters her life away, God bless her, for feeding her ageing mother. Why don't you find her a good home, I say, in the country? There must be uh, some country that'd take her. <laughs> Not on my fault. Oh, you notice, Granville, very good. It gives me confidence I'm doing right in uh, making you deputy manager. Yeah. Deputy manager with one foot. Oh, you don't know. You're born. In my young day, errand boys were employed specifically for the purposes of being there to trod on. 
We've had a bad day, we used to say. Let's go go and tread on an errand boy. <laughs> and do you think it did him any harm? No, of course not. Kept him healthy, like getting him up early in the morning. The place was full of healthy cripples. <laughs> you think you get up early, do you? Oh. Let me tell you, in my young day, they sometimes had got us up before we went to bed. <laughs> Work that out. You don't think that paper man could be late, do you? Because there's a, a crisis in the street. Ambulance, maybe, are rushing to take the aged relative of my beloved off to intensive eating somewhere. <coughs> no, I expect the twit's just parked up here checking his bingo numbers. What's so important about the paper this morning? I can't hear that feather duster going, Grandville. <laughs> <laughs> That's more like it. Nothing so soothes a shopkeeper as the sound of a, of a well-aimed feather flicking round his comestible. <laughs> there must be more to life than this. <laughs> oh, where did I go wrong, eh? I mean, you know, I could have been anything, couldn't I, eh? I could have been a... I could have been a captain in the Paris. A one-parent family. <laughs> could, have been, could have been an astronaut. Could have been a gastronaut, I'm so hungry. Hey, up he's here. What time do you call this? What? What are you looking for? Happiness, uh, Granville. How oh, can we afford it? It costs more than a quid, you'd be sending it back. No, no, for those with the necessary skills and ingenuity, it can come for fairly cheaply. Here it is, look. There it is. My, my, my master stroke. Listen to this here. A wanted live in housekeeper. Good home in exchange for the light duties. Apply in person to Arkwright's superstores. Oh, the woman coming to live here. What is Nurse Gladys going to say? Exactly. Eh? There you have her. Put your finger on it. Which is more than I've been able to do lately. <laughs> I'll tell you what Nurse Gladys is going to say. She's going to say, hey, up, I better marry him quick. He's getting a bit restless. And thus, with one masterstroke, I have brought my years of frustration uh, to an end. <laughs> and we all know which end, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there's no sh sugar in them. Eh? Oh. Hey! <laughs> <coughs> yeah. There we are, my dear. Call again when you've saved up. You don't get much for your money these days. Oh, but then you never did, you see. It's just that the much you didn't get then was much muchier than the, the much you don't get so much of now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I can't understand it either. Hey, Nurse Gladys is going to kill you. <laughs> she probably knows how to do it without leaving a trace. Nurse Gladys will be overcome with remorse for not having snatched me up in the first place. What are you going to do with a live-in housekeeper, anyway? I'm not sure that's a, a proper question for an errand boy. Mm. Oh, which bedroom is she going to have? She's not having mine. <laughs> really need it. <clears throat> entertaining. Entertaining? Since when did you do any entertaining? I may be starting. Don't take me for granted. I'm on the verge of a much richer social life. Oh, I see, that's your game, is it? Listen, I'm having no errand boys on the verge while, while the management's going short. That is going to be my bachelor pad. I'm going to redecorate it. I'm going to put in some subdued lighting to set off me model aircraft. Oh, dear. I'll subdue your lighting if you're not careful. If you start that, your mother was just the same, you know. I've never known anyone like her for saving electricity. Uh, so I shall have a few of my set dropping in for drinks. They'll be known as the cocktail set. Oh. Oh, they'll say, hey, that Granville, he really knows how to shake a mean Joan Collins. <laughs> Tom Collins. <laughs> I shake who you like and I shake who I like. <laughs> that housekeeper is not having my bachelor pad. Look, Granville, I wish you'd uh, just relax and stop being so Hungarian about everything. No one's going to take away your bachelor pad. Where else would I store all them lavatory cleaners? <laughs> hey, that's another thing. I want them out. They'd an half clash with me Aubrey Beardsley print. 
<laughs> Very suitable from what I saw of it. Hey, that reminds me. Look, if you're the shopkeeper, she's the housekeeper. What am I going to keep? Your mouth shut. <laughs> We're not going to have a, a living housekeeper. Well, what did you advertise for? It's just a shopkeeper's ploy. It's just that I want to put a little bit of pur 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 pep into my la love light. <laughs> oh, right. You're a conniving old man, aren't you, eh? <laughs> no, you are, you're devious. You're always up to crafty little tricks. Thank you, Granville. It's very nice of you to say oh, so. I don't know. What am I doing, eh? I live here with this wicked old uncle who's got no scruples. I'm exposed to very little in the way of higher cultural influence. I mean, we never talk about the aspects of the modern novel or Chinese architecture. Now, come on, be honest. When was the last time that we had a chat about Chinese architecture? When they built that to the takeaway in Gladstone Street one day. <laughs> I would like to collect delicate porcelain figures. Oh, I'd like to give porcelain for Christmas. You know that, Granville? He always gives porcelain for Christmas. <laughs> I'd like to advise some of the most beautiful women in the world on how to improve their collections. We're getting low on tins of scrumptious again. <laughs> You're a dreamer, you are, porcelain. The nearest you ever come to porcelain is the lavatory seat. <laughs> a dream Your mother was a dreamer and all. At least I think she was. She used to lie down a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what my father did. He did quite enough. <laughs> you know, sometimes I feel as though I might... I might be Hungarian. You're a Budapest, I'll tell you that. <laughs> At least us Hungarians, we know how to sweep our women off their feet. We don't have to advertise for living housekeeping. Hey, hey, that's your point. Supposing some poor woman applies for the job? <laughs> what on the wages I pay? Oh, that's true, that's true. <laughs> hey, hey, look. Hey, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Her smartly into wedlock, you watch. Good morning, my bear beloved. I'm not your bear beloved. No, I know, and you never will be, Peter. Don't get on with it. I know what you're doing. I'm a doing without, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Good, Granville, please get your bike and get them orders out. Go on. Oh, I got cycle fatigue. Get on with it. <laughs> There's no need to shove the poor lad out. There's nothing I've got to say to you he can't hear. Oh, good. <laughs> See? Oh. <laughs> you get worse. And what are you doing starting all this gossip? Oh, you've been keeping abreast of the local news, have you? And I must say, it's a breast worth keeping. <laughs> get off, you big daft. You've been reading the newspaper, I see. What I've been reading is you, like a book. Living housekeeper. Oh, well, you seem superbly qualified from this angle. Uh, when can you start? Or have you started? I know what you're doing. Yes, I can do it better if you let, let go of my hand. <laughs> you're trying to rush me into marriage. Rush? Do you call six years a rush? It's all a big bluff. If some woman answered this advert, you'd wet your bacon counter. <laughs> <laughs> you'd go to pieces in case you found that old tin you keep your money in. <laughs> Voice down about our tin. That's our little nest egg, is that? Well, it's time it was hatched. You've been sitting on it long enough. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a chicken in here. <laughs> you see? <laughs> the place is infested with errand boys. Don't pull his ear, you'll stretch it. Oh, that Granville, he's got long ears, you know. Oh, oh love. Hey, you don't harbour him in your bosom. <laughs> he's unmanageable at a body temperature like that. Get him out of there. Granville, come on. Granville, come on. Granville. Granville. Come on. Come on, come on. Watch this, look. The bounty hunters. Come on, look. 
<laughs> you like those, don't you? Aye, oh, lovely. Yeah, put your money in the till. <laughs> I'd stayed where I was. More coconuts in there than there is in here. <laughs> You shouldn't pull his ear. Oh, it's traditional to handle errand boys by, by the ears, like rabbits. A species with which they have much in common, if you give them half a chance. <laughs> oh, I hate this till. Go on, get on with it, won't I bite you? He's <laughs> 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 ah, ah! <laughs> got me! Look, he's got me! I knew it was not! Have you seen this? Oh. What do you think? <laughs> 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 Can you oh. twist him this way? Careful, careful. <laughs> this will put pay to your cocktail set. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, just leave me. Save yourselves. It never lets go. Oh, I think we do better without them trousers. I've been <laughs> saying that for years. <laughs> Not yours no. is. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, great. This is Granville slips nonchalantly out of his trousers. I had hoped it would be in a more romantic setting. Oh, dear. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> What have you got on there? <laughs> that's not underwear for working in, that's underwear for uh, faffing about in. <laughs> Can you lift your leg? I'm lifting. Mind his leg, leave him alone. It's not your business. Uh, it's time you change this rotten till. Change the uh, till? This has done me very well as this till. Oh, no, it's not satisfied with money. It wants blood now. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Why ever are you putting your granville into that till? Oh, no, no. don't worry, Mrs. Bickerdyke. He's just putting a little something away for a rainy day, dear. <laughs> Cover me up. Cover me oh. up. Which part is your up? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Strange how Hungarian he looks from some angles. <laughs> Reminds me, there was this man up in Arnold Crescent. Brother and wife swapper. In business for himself, he used to wear things like that. You can see them on his clothes line. I used to think, yes, mister, I don't care what's leaking. You'll never be invited under my sink. Yes, quite right, Mrs. Bickerdyke. You keep your waste disposal to yourself. Uh, hey, what's he doing advertising for living housekeepers? He'd drop dead if anyone applied. He's all wind and economy. Well, they're bad for your heart to live in, housekeepers. There was him up in Finkel Street. Died very sudden from a living housekeeper. <laughs> they seem to be much more overstimulating than legal wives. And I know what you die of. Acute constriction of the wallet. You might be surprised how quickly I would take to a suitable applicant. There will be a warm shopkeeper's welcome waiting for anyone who walks through that door. <laughs> Except her. <laughs> Listen, go, go and serve the the the, the, lay, the old uh, the customer. Customer? Is he talking to me? <laughs> I'm not a customer. She's not a customer. <laughs> no, I'm not a customer. I just come in answer. We're clear. To we're clear. We're clear. We're clear. We're clear. We're shot. 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 Yes. What's he doing, shut? Don't, don't talk to him. He doesn't even work here. <laughs> we are shut uh, on account of the fe fe festival. Festival? Fe festival? The festival. The St. Saint, Saint Cecil's. We always shut early on St. Saint Cecil's. Who's Sir Cecil? No, not Sir Cecil. Just Sir Cecil. News to me. Yes, they shall shut early. <laughs> it's one of the biggest uh, shut early festivals in the whole of York. <laughs> Which one of you fellas is our cry? <laughs> well, it's not me. I'm his live out lady friend. Oh. Well, will you tell him I called in answer to a request from my friend Mrs. Dowdall, who is housebound on account of a terrible knee? <laughs> will you tell him Mrs. Dowdall only requires. Two small brown tomorrow, <laughs> not three. You're all right. Don't worry, I'll tell him, love. No, thank you very much. 
Tablets. I think you've developed a fever. Fever? I should think I have developed a fever. That's a, a small brown loaf we're down tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see his hand? In any crisis, it goes straight to his wallet. <laughs> I wish somebody would apply. I love to see him when he gets into a state. It's uh, where care, 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 where care, 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 care. <laughs> <Good shot. laughs> Oh, well, it's the Black Widow. <laughs> well, she put the fear of God into him, wouldn't she? <laughs> She'd put the fear of God into God. Yeah. Hey, do you reckon we could persuade her to pretend to apply for the job? You know, just for a laugh, eh? The Black Widow? Aye. To get a laugh out of her, she'd need surgery. <laughs> <laughs> do you think she knows how? <laughs> Good day to you, Mrs. Featherstone. Is it? Maybe it is if you're young and daft. Life's not so funny for mature persons of a sober disposition. Cold, dear. Yeah? <clears throat> All the more reason for us to have a little joke when we get the opportunity. <laughs> Listen, I want... You must you breathe in my ear? <laughs> I'm not sure it's seemly, young men breathing in your ear. And I hope we'll have no joking when I'm living here. I'll thank you not to go breathing in me ear when I'm your living housekeeper. <laughs> Can you repeat that slowly, please, Mrs. <laughs> You're going to apply. Oh, can you think of anyone better qualified to lighten the burden of a prosperous businessman? I've always admired the strength of his grip on money. He needs someone by his side, a person of the same sober financial disposition. Black Widow in his lap. He's in for a shock. <laughs> Interesting. We come in to see the fun. <laughs> Don't be too anxious. Give her a moment to break it to him gently. <laughs> I'll to take the orders out. <laughs> I've unleashed him a monster. I knew it was a bad omen when you caught your tra trousers in the till. Hello, I thought that's a bit a bit near the knuckle. Oh, near enough for me, too. <laughs> I've never been able to read tea leaves, but Erin Boy's hair trousers I can decipher in a flash. Sometimes he may even before they flash. <laughs> oh. Hey. hey suppose supposing it's her. The, the Black Widow, Mrs. Fur, 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 Mrs. Fur, 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 you know, her. <laughs> go and see, go on, Hugo, oh, Hugo. You... Oh. I never thought I'd see the day when I was frightened to answer my own bell. <clears throat> Mrs. Featherstone would like a word. No, relax, relax, relax. It's, it's, all, it's only a fella. Oh, <laughs> you... <laughs> who's come to apply for a job as a live-in housekeeper. <laughs> no, it's a customer. It's just an ordinary customer, of course. <laughs> Supposing she comes in while I'm serving you. Oh, go on, Good morning, can I... Oh, hey, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I I've got to get out there and sell. I can't just the faff about in here. I haven't got, got the underwear for it. <laughs> oh, no, sir, what a little outright bargain can I get you? I'll just get, get my assistant. Come on, I've got one of these up, please. <clears throat> Good morning. Can I...? He's gone. Oh, you let him get away now. Me? God, why is it always my fault, eh? Oh, I hate losing the fully grown customers. Little ones are different. You don't mind to throw in a few of them back for, for later. 
Oh, oh dear. Look, don't start going to pieces. All you've got to do is to put the woman off. I don't want her to live here any more than you do. I mean, who wants a living zombie? <laughs> what I want to know is, how come when she died, they buried her husband? <laughs> Look, never mind that. How am I going to put her off? I wish you'd have tell me that instead of her poking your trousers in the till. It's simple, it's simple. She's only attracted to you because she thinks you're a money grabber and a, a miserly old skin flint. Well, I don't know where she got that idea from. <laughs> All you got to do is make her think that you're a reckless big spender. A big suspender? No, no, no. <laughs> Try and take your mind off Nurse Gladys's underwear for a minute, will you? Look, if she thinks you're a spender, you know, a big spender, she'll disappear over the horizon. Well, how can I do that? She's the customer, not me. I'm supposed to take the money and then give it a good home. Look, you've been threatening to redo the shop front for years, right? You know, listen, let her see you getting that done. That'll frighten her off. But you're going to have to be reckless. Reckless? Aye, no, utterly. Utterly and reckless. Oh, Granville, I'm, I'm just glad your poor mother isn't here to hear you using all this foul language. How to think about it. Look, it's no, no good. No, no, Please, not another very rude word. <laughs> to his shop front. I didn't think he was the type. Forget to his age, forget the urge to do things with their old fronts. <laughs> I'd have this out. I'd have that out. A full new exterior. A whole expanse of glass. You must go for glass. What's the matter with your uncle? Oh, he's all right. He gets a sort of sympathetic pregnancy every time large bills start coming due. <laughs> uh, 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 how much? <laughs> you got to be looking at that. Well, I'll, I'll t tell you what I'm g going to do with you. I'm going to go for p p part of the scheme. You won't regret it. We can transform this place. It'll be like a fairy tale. Uh, Which part of the scheme were you interested in? Well, I'm, g I'm going to go for a whole new... a uh, whole in, in a new... Uh, the, oh, the doorknob. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, knobs to the lot of you. <laughs> It's been a funny day. I wish our Granville hadn't got so much loose trouser. Enough room in there for a living housekeeper. <laughs> Fancy getting them caught in the till. Still, better Granville's trousers than Mrs. Featherstone's hand. Not to mention her trousers. God preserve me from ever having to mention her unmentionables. One thing is certain, she'll never get her knicker legs over my washing line. <laughs>